Welcome everyone. We welcome you. Father, our Father, my Father, which art in heaven, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, my Master, I am his bond slave, and I was purchased with a price right here. That's the purchase area, and we're talking about their ghosts, the presence of the Lord coming to us, the Holy Ghost. It's a ghost that's holy. It's a presence that's holy. And we just rejoice in the fellowship. We Christians, we who are born again, we rejoice in this fellowship. And we listen to the voice of our Father, of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ, and their ghost, the precious Holy Ghost, the presence of Father. And we Christians rejoice in the presence of this quartet. And when the brethren are, are around, it is a quintet. And we're all listening to the voice of the Lord. Um, we're, we're listening to the voice of the Master. And when Father speaks, we should be listening. This is Jeremiah, and this is New Covenant. As you can see on the board here, we're going to get into biblical astrology today. And this should be video 50 or so. And I am really happy that you are taking the time as we all learn to gr as we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we greet you, of course, in Jesus' name. Amen. We, we, we rejoice. And again I say rejoice in all of the things and, and, and the time that we spend which we're learning to spend all of our time basically pleasing Father. And, and let's get into the lesson. The Lord is our shepherd. He's my shepherd. I don't have any wants. This is a part of Aries here. I don't have any wants because of the ruling shepherd, Aries. He takes care of you and everything that is related to your needs and even some of your wants. He, he is going to provide. Therefore, not only do I, I have no want, I shall not want. And this is one of the wonderful cornerstones of Christianity. And I share this quite often at the introduction or in the introduction of, uh, of most of my videos. I want to bring you to Psalm 23, in spite of the fact that this is New Covenant. And we focus on the words and the testimony of Jesus and Paul and so forth. This is where we start our Bible study. We're in the 2,000-year New Covenant offer. Remember, this is an offer to covenant. This is an offer to agree with God. See, God already loves love and truth and honesty. This is an agreement that you're going to love truth and love. It's an agreement that you come up to his standard in terms of what kind of person we're going to be. And obviously there's going to be some uh, battles here, but we're not going to get into that right now, okay? So let's get into the lesson for today. Biblical astrology, you can call it astronomy, it's logical or logical, uh, logos is the word of God, and um, gnome or astronome or name is the same thing. Biblical astrology, biblical astronomy. Astronomy tends to be more mathematical, but is it... I think it's fine to, to use anyone you wish. I use biblical astrology, which means the study of astro or stars. Now, we're talking about the 12 zodiac signs, and there are 36 decans, a total of 48 images, and they're basically silent messages. When you can put the dots together and draw the lines, you can see with the names of the stars, such as Akrab, which means conflict, that belongs here. Conflict, number three. So the names of the stars, the design that God placed in the sky that circles above you in a cake dome, 
not too far above your head and the, the, it contains 48 images and they are seasonal and of course this is pertaining to the beginning and the end Alpha and Omega which we get repeatedly a few times there in the book of Revelation so what we're getting into now is the good news in the sky of the zodiac belt that spins above you there, there's a cake dome above you it's not that high it's only a couple thousand miles above your head and it's strong the Bible says the sky is strong of molten glass Okay, the Bible teaches this, and I, I, I might give you a sneak preview into my, my, final, my final lesson on geo-celestial physics. What is actually heaven and earth? What are the measurements and so forth? Uh, I go into that, and I might give you a sneak preview into that a little later. Okay, as we get into this good news in the sky, the gospel, which starts out with the birth of Christ and basically ends in Revelations chapter... Revelation chapter, I would say, probably 5, where the Lamb of God is also the Lion. It is also the Leo, the Lion. He is the Lion from the tribe of Judah that came into the world as the Sagittar, and he came and he overcame the justice here that men, and he purchased men, by legally and wisely, father and son, purchased legally a lost group of individuals here. Then he clasps them, or grabs them, and he won't let them go in the cancer sign. See, here's the, here's the gathering after the Holy Spirit falls in Aquarius, then there is the clutching and the holding on and the love and the preparation in New Jerusalem, etc. And then it culminates, of course, and ends with from birth all the way around until we get to the book of Revelation where Jesus is worthy to loose the seven seals thereof of the book of life. And he, we can get the names now. We can read the names. And it's a process here. And I call it a merry-go-round because there is joy in all of this. In spite of Jesus Christ suffering here on number five Capricorn, in spite of this uh, terrible event, life came from it. The worst death of, 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 uh, in recorded history by far turned into the most life, or, or the life, life abundantly here, which is eternal life. See, but let's get started on the merry-go-round. This is this. It, it, it should make you happy. That's what the word blessed means. It means eulogia, which means basically happy, or God's going to make things favorable for your life. However, when we get to the New Testament, the the, the entire narrative is changed. It's drastically changed. The denotation is is altered. There, it doesn't necessarily mean anymore that you're going to have a good life based upon God's grace and his uh, being pleased with you, okay? That was the Old Testament. Now, when the New Testament comes, all of a sudden, blessed is being poor, blessed is hating your life, blessed is falling on the rock, blessed is suffering with Jesus so, so that you might reign with him. Death is a seed falling in the ground so that it might give life. Death is laying your life down for the brethren now. Death is taking up a slave yoke. Uh, and now it turns into life now, see? And so blessed or blessed has changed and let's get into the merry-go-round, and it means eulogia, blessed, merry, happy. He has made me glad, joy, into the joy of your master, etc. How are you going to enter that joy? You're going to go through the similar process of what the Lord did here. See, that's what it means. And, and here's the easiest example right here. Jesus said, if you, if you hate your life, you're going to live. It doesn't take a fourth grader to get that, okay? Uh, a lot of people can get this. The basic good news, when I teach, I teach in general basic doctrine. I am a general practitioner, and I am not into getting into, or rather, I'm not going to get into uh, biblical astrology in depth. 
for those of you who are interested, you can go online. I just saw a web page from one of the Christian brethren. Uh, this gentleman went into like super detail. We're talking, we're talking pages and pages and pages. I decided to narrow it down to the basic uh, cognates of what this means, okay? Um, as far as a lot of subtext, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to go into star names, etc. too much here. We're going to get into what the Bible has to say about these stars, especially pertaining to the gospel and sound doctrine. That's what Jeremiah does. And many of you have noticed that about this ministry. My servitude of uh, being an Israelite, that's what, that's what Israelite means. It means you're a true servant. And I want to be faithful. That's what I want to be. And you got to want to be faithful. And in spite of some... Uh, uh, I don't know what you would say uh, uh, challenges. Uh, you you still uh, you still want to be faithful and so on and so on. You know you you want to and I don't want to go there right now. Let let's stick to good news in the sky. Bethlehem to the lion of the tribe of Judah. So it's a merry-go-round. And what makes you merry, what makes you happy, is to see the absolute authority of the one who is in charge and the absolute authority of the one who controls Hydra and controls this enemy, see? And number three, Scorpio, okay? We're rejoicing that this belt and these 12 signs and 36 decans, of which I'm not going to go into too much. Uh, I did have a lesson on decans. Uh, I, I am not going to go into decans. I've decided to make seven boards and make them quick. Okay? And as I said before, there are other brethren out there who will help you if you're really interested in this. I'm going to give you a basic overview as it is related to the good news and sound doctrine. Okay? The New Testament basic sound doctrine. And that's my basic job as a Bible teacher. Okay, I am a general practitioner of, you know, of a Bible teacher per se. Okay, now, once again, I am Jeremiah and I am going to take you to and drop some knowledge on you from heaven and let's get started. So number one is virgin child or a pregnant virgin and that is a woman who has conceived from a d divine source, from the seed of Father, to create his only begotten Son. Today I have begotten thee. Psalm chapter 2 also says things along these lines of the Son. Ask of me, and I will give unto you the very ends of the earth as thy possession. And that's speaking to his Son. Uh, my Lord said to my Lord, the Father is speaking to the Son. We have, we have a God as peace, and we have the Prince of Peace, right? So let's move on. So we have, we have the pregnant virgin. She, she has divine conception. We have the holiday of Bethlehem for this, of Christ's birth, to, to, to commemorate and to put into remembrance this particular era of the child. Then we go to Libra, which is what is the first thing in the main goal of this child's life. It is to come and be a kinsman redeemer, the, the, the substitute for Jeremiah's punishment and for your punishment if you're a Christian. That punishment replacement is applied to you upon love and subjection to the master, making him your Lord and you his servant. Which, which, which culminates into or, or, or is commensurate to adoption, which is why we automatically call him father right away. This is extremely significant. Now, moving on to Scorpio, remember, this is two, which is uh, something has to be done to balance the scales out. They've been tilted by sin. In order for man to, to exist and live, that scale has to be balanced. And in order to do that, he has to face the one who has been given this realm. And that is the realm of humans. He has to take the authority. Because when humans believed a lie, they were damned. If you believe lies and if you reject the commands of God, you're damned. You're cursed. The word cursed and damned are basically the same thing. And it's based upon you rejecting the orders from the Creator. That's essentially what it is. First it was, uh, in, a, in a, uh, a profound way, it was don't touch that tree over there. It belongs to Daddy. 
Then the second one was, I want you to go to that tree over there. That's 4,000 years later. Both of them are commands. You must, you, you must do them. You know, and, and you don't find amazing grace without doing the second one because we're in the new covenant era. You must go to the Son. And you must love the Son. And you must believe that the Son has the authority. And, and, and you must think about Him properly too. We're not going to go into that. So we have Scorpio, which has that tail, which is not uh, in the facade. So we're dealing with deception here. We're dealing with lies and deception because the tail is not uh, something that's, that is in the I immediate visage of this creature. He's coming to you in a sneaky fashion. Deception. Disguise. Okay? Uh, a deceiver. He'll use seduction in many ways and many methods and methodologies in order to take away what you own, which is your four ounces. Okay? Now we have the Sagittar, which is next. He has accuracy and wisdom from Sagi. He's a sage. God is the true and wise God, the only wise God. God doesn't, doesn't do things like, uh, and let me give you an example. Here in this state, they, they, they just built a new auditorium for sports. What they should have done, to, if they were wise, in my opinion, and I, I think it's, it makes sense, is, is to build some divided highways here and to increase the, the, the traffic safety and so forth. But they chose to invest their money into sports. See, that's, that, that's what I would call unwise. See, God would never do nothing like that. When you look outdoors here, I'm looking outdoors, God has everything in order. He doesn't do things out of order or unwise. Everything he does is in excellence. And the same thing applies to coming and getting us. God used supreme wisdom and knowledge in order to purchase us. And he promised Adam and Eve when they made their error that he was essentially coming to, go, coming to get them. Um, if you're a nice person, basically, in the Old Testament, God's going to come and get you out of Abraham's bosom, which is in bottom, which is next to hell. It's below the waters, in darkness. But he had to perform the Capricorn event in order for you to enter into Aquarius and Pisces realm, which is receiving grace and living in that water. You're living in that grace in the Pisces sign. You're, you're, you're living in the realm of, of Judah and Israel. Now, some people look at Pisces as Jew and Gentile. I put that down, but let's get into Sagittarius. So the wise, two-natured one, God and man, has his arrows pointed towards taking and destroying the power that this scorpion and this snake, also represented as Hydra, as a Deccan, he has control over the people in the Cancer and in the Pisces representative area here. Okay? So through his wisdom, the father and son are going to work a plan that they can legally purchase Jeremiah, uh, a, a wretch like me, and he's, he's going to purchase me with a lot of wisdom and a lot of power we can see in Taurus, and of course we can see power in Leo, etc. Now, let's move on to Capricorn. Now, we, we, we've already had the virgin child, the birth of that child, who faces the, 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 the legal situation, and, and the individual who, who actually has some sort of control over that legal situation uh, where men are going to die, and they're not going to heaven, never, uh, they're, they're not going in. But then we have the God-man who comes as your kinsman redeemer in a human body, and if he doesn't, if he doesn't sin... And he turns away all pleasure of sin for a season, and he suffers terribly. He can purchase and take that scale to even, and take the authority away from the scorpion snake situation here, the enemy of man. And also, of course, to introduce the practice of righteousness. This is very important for the purchase of the Judah and Israel and the two folds here. 
Jew and Gentile probably here. In order for these folds to enter into this action that, that, that was, that, that was uh, performed by the Father and Son, and more specifically the Son, then we, then we can enter into the Holy Spirit of the Aquarius, and that's based upon loving righteousness, just as the Sagittar was wise in loving righteousness and hating evil. Okay? That's how you get your new name in heaven, that you're the only one that's going to know your new name on a white stone. Very interesting and very personal. Um, uh, Christianity gets awfully personal at times, especially in that Revelations chapter 2 and 3. Uh, there's some very beautiful things there that's only uh, recorded there. So we now we go to the God-man who was so wise, who lived holy with two natures as your kinsman redeemer, who went to the courthouse and said, I'll pay for Jeremiah. I have the, I have the goods. I'm... I'm pure and righteous, and I'm going to offer it to the, to the Father, and uh, can, can, I, can I buy him out? I'm going to go ahead and suffer terribly and die so that he might live, and that the other Christians might also live. That's Capricorn, life coming from a kneeling calf. They have this calf here with its legs extended. I, I, I think that's improper, but that's okay. Then we go to Aquarius, which is the living water is now coming to those who were dead. And that is to live righteous and accept the imputation of righteousness. You receive the forgiveness, and then you, you, you hunger and thirst after righteousness, see? And then everything is good. By receiving the king of righteousness and getting a 100% imputation, just as if you never sinned, and maintaining that acquisition by the initial humiliation and continued humiliation in your life, such as turning away from sin, rejecting sin, and loving righteousness and denial, just as the Capricorn did, the original Capricorn, and you become a living Capricorn. And that brings you to a new Capricorn, and then you receive the living waters. Then you enter into uh, a grafted-in Israelite here, who's tied to Cetus, the sea monster. And, then we, and that, is, of course, is groups. And one is uh, Cassiopeia. I'll tell you a couple of decans here real fast. One is Cassiopeia, which means the enthroned woman. And, and the Andromeda is the chained woman from Andromeda meaning the woman is all over the place. The Cassiopeia has devoted herself to righteousness and has accepted the 100% imputation of righteousness and, and has acknowledged the mercy of God and the grace of God and is humble and walks humbly before God. That means that she's Cassiopeia. That means that we are Cassiopeia, who enter into servitude, love service to the Son, and hungering after righteousness and loving mercy. That makes you Cassiopeia. What makes you Andromeda is when you mess up the possibility. You, 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 you didn't perform the love retort. The Bible says to love the Lord your God, and if you don't do that, then you are Andromeda. I think Andromeda leans more towards one of the two fish here, and it leans more towards the one that had a chance, the one like Judas who had a garden position of entering into the kingdom and keeping that soul, and they, they, they got all mixed up. Andro. Andro means left and right. It's, it's like the word um, uh, schizophrenic. It also means uh, more along the lines of being deceptive, a schemata of, of the original meaning of intelligence, and it also means going left and right at the same time. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're enigmatic. You're not sure, and you're in the realm of phileo. You're a Gentile. You're animal-like, and your heart is not circumcised, and you don't have intelligence, discretion, and discernment. This is very important. But let's move on to Aries, which is, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs in his arms. He is the head lamb, and he is the head ram, and he also is going to rule, and that deals with power too. There's These particular 12 signs refer to power, but they also refer also to 
weakness and laying down your life. And there's a lot of stuff going on here. Aries, I think, is, is more along the lines, and I'm not going to go into star names right now or anything, but I think it deals with the ruling shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. And my sheep, they hear my voice, and I call them, and they have eternal life, and they shall never die. Uh, my Father, who is greater than all, gave them unto me. See, the, and, it, and, it, and here's how he got them right here. By wisdom and sacrifice and being aggressive, at going after the individual that had you. Okay. So, let's move on. No one is able to snatch them out of my hand, which goes to cancer. Now, let's go to Taurus. Taurus is essentially a power figure. We're talking about El Shaddai here and the power figure, okay? And the power figure is a has the bullseye and so forth. And let's move on to 10, which is twins. There's a lot of speculation amongst well-educated people um, and, and not so educated like me. This is mildly educated. But the, the twins, some people say it refers to Judah and Benjamin. Uh, some people say it refers to the two natures of Christ. I think that's more along Sagittar. Uh, however, they do say that the Gemini does also refer to um, Jesus being 100% man and 100% God. My opinion on Gemini is, is it might be the Father and the Son. That's what I think. And that, of course, is in John chapter 15 and so forth. It's John 15 and 16. But we, we won't go there. So... And then, of course, now we have the two folds, Gentiles and Jews. They're all one. There's no such thing as Jew or Gentile, uh, um, male or female, uh, slave nor bond, slave nor free. Everyone came from uh, Book of Acts, the same ethnos. Everybody came from Adam and Eve. There are no genetic differences in humans. That is a myth, okay, that has been promoted by the devil probably. Um, uh, but who, we're not going to get into that. So, and he's going to hold these two folds. And then we have Leo, of course, which is the lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed. In other words, he did come, he was smart, he was strong, and he did care. See, there's a lot of care going on here in this. If you look at this and look at some of the names of the stars, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, in Scorpio and Sagittarius, we have a Deccan kind of in between, if my memory is correct. That's Ra's al Getty, which is in the... Uh, Hercules, uh, uh, Perseus, or uh, Aruga, Good Shepherd Deccan, which refers to the head of him that crushes. He's doing all of this not because he has to. This is very interesting what we're looking at, all 12 of these, that, that the reason why we, we're, we're, we're looking at a merry-go-round is because we're happy, because all of this is being performed... For you, this is what's amazing about all this, is that God is in heaven, and he's relaxing, as they used to say, maxing and relaxing, whatever. Um, he's happy where he is. He hasn't done anything wrong. He, he doesn't need to come, and, and for God so loved Jeremiah that he would give his son. I, um, he, he doesn't have to do it, and, and, and this should make you happy. That's why I call this a merry-go-round. And I, it's also, a, of course, it's a prophecy-go-round here, see? Prophecy. All these 12, this is how they look in the sky um, from a raw perspective of looking at the zodiac belt. You can see these images here. You see this, and you have to draw the lines, and th this is what you do in your mind, so to speak, and you can come up with the images that are here, okay? And we, we can see that God is omniscient by doing all of this. He sees everything. He, he's fully wise in Sagittar, and he's full of mercy, and we can see that throughout the entire scope here. Okay? And, and Psalm 74, 2 says, we see not our signs. Why don't we see the signs? Why don't we know the scriptures? Because there's no prophet. No one wants to listen, watch, and see. No one wants to 
spend the time and the energy to love God and draw near unto God. And, and, that, and the results are you're drawing near to entertainment, family per se, which is not all bad, but it's all bad if you don't have a lot of time for the Creator and the one who performed all of these things for you to enter into fellowship and to be forgiven and have your scales even. That's a lot of work. So you need to ascribe to the Lord the glory to His name and the honors due to His name. Okay? We see not our prophets here. Why? Because you're, you've got, you're, you're, your Bible's collecting spider webs in the corner. You, know, you have to take time. Now, you don't have to spend the time Jeremiah does, but I would suggest that you find some time. Uh, um, uh, I, I, would, I would admonish you as a friendly warning that uh, you need to, to do what pleases God. That's what we're here for. <laughs> okay? Well, let's, let's get to board number two here. As we are done with a quick review here of the virgin child, justice, the enemy, the devil, God and man uh, as, as a wise uh, uh, hero for us. Jesus is our hero and, and, and he is our creator also and, and he's going to die, with, which is a wise thing, an intelligent thing to do. If you care about somebody, you are smart enough to, to know and to perform and to know and be intelligent enough how to get that person out of jail. And, and the results are living waters. The results are men know how to live righteous now. Men know what the commands are because through the commands and the teachings of love, you're going to live. If no one teaches you to love, you'll die. You'll die living in hate. If no one teaches you the truth, you can be deceived by the scorpion, by the snake, and think that you can get away with not adopting truth and care into your personality. Be it through Muslimhood, communism, Catholicism, and the Jesuit oath, be it a backroom commitment as a politician at 2 in the morning uh, with the devil or something, or a banker who charges 30% interest compounded daily, or any evil act of any kind can disqualify you, especially pertaining to, uh, well, any evil act will be recorded and you'll be, you'll be held accountable for that until you come to the sun. See? Then the, 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 the dynamics change. Okay? And that's, we won't go into that. Now let's go into Virgo and Libra in detail, and I'm going to stop here. So Virgo is the pregnant virgin, or coma, or uh, the, the desire of men throughout all of the ages. That's what coma means. Desire of ages. What do the nations want? Well, they need the prophet we just talked about in Psalm 74 too. We don't see nothing. We don't know nothing. <laughs> we, we don't know how to, 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 to please God. We haven't been introduced to the method of pleasing God. Which is the only way is Christ now. I am the way to please God. I am the way to remove your scale being tilted. And therefore, coma is a very important uh, um, decan in all 36 decans because that's the Christ child who, who is going to grow up and purchase legally. And that means Hosanna for not only the Jews, but the Gentiles also. That means the favorable year of our Lord. It means also save us. Jesus' name means God saves Jesus saves. That's one of the basic uh, 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 premises or teachings of Christianity is that simply Jesus saves. And the point here is that uh, uh, save us, it means that we're in a bad situation. And look, Hosanna is here. The favorable year, favorable, hosh, Rosh Hashanah, the favorable new year and the, 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 the time that God is happy to come to you. When is God happy to come and meet you? Such as Bethabara in Jordan. 
He's happy to come when you eat living bread. When you eat servitude and you live humbly, you're going to meet God. He's going to be happy to come to you. He's going to make your house his house. That's the whole point of Beth or Bethlehem, the house of bread, or Bethel, God's house. He, he's going to show up where humility exists. Mary was very humble, so she was chosen. You can tell by her discourse when, when the Lord, when the angel came to her, that she was ready to do what? She was primed and ready to go for a servant position. She calls herself a handmaid. When you start calling yourself a handmaid and you're a woman or a servant and, a, and you're a man, you're on your way to salvation. You're on your way to making a connection and, and, and abiding in Christ. When you begin to speak the commands of servitude, you're on your way to adoption. You shall be called the son of the highest. The reason why is because you're behaving in humility and in meekness and self-control and kindness just like your highness. That's the point. So we have the, the pregnant virgin who is pregnant by divine conception. And in Genesis 3.15, And her seed, it shall bruise thy head. Jesus is going to come and bruise his head. And that's through Taurus. That's through the feet of Leo. That's through the arrow of the Sagittar. And, the, and, and more wisdom of the Sagittar, and more wisdom of the King Shepherd, the Lamb of God. He's going to bruise the head, and he's going to use power and wisdom. And Jeremiah 50, 34 says, their Redeemer is strong. The one who came to purchase your errors is strong. And there's going to be rest in the land now, because he's going to wipe out Babylon and wipe away Babylon's power over you. The devil and his organization, and that organization in spirit below the earth, and in flesh in the governments, and in the, in the powers that be that can come and arrest you and so forth. So Jeremiah 50 is very significant because we're going to receive rest. Jesus said, put my yoke upon you, and you, you shall find rest for your souls. The only way to find rest from this coma boy who grows up is for you to be in full submission and to become an Israelite. If you want to enter into the commonwealth, and what's common for us, that blesses us, is rest. Okay? 1 Corinthians 7.23, you are brought, bought with a price. So the full payment is by the kinman who grows up from the child. And Isaiah 26 says, With my soul have I desired thee, the world to learn righteousness. So we are souls as the deer panteth for the water brook. You and your soul have longed for like a tree for water or an animal. You've been thirsting after that which saves your soul and gets you out of sin and learn righteousness. See, the world introduced evil, but your soul in the world needed to learn how to be in full submission and listen to the commands of the Lord. And the first one, of course, is repentance and baptism. And Jesus came as the promised seed, first as Messiah ben Joseph, or the anointed son as Joseph, to suffer. Then he comes back, of course, as Joshua over Babylon, over Jericho, which is Messiah ben David. Okay? And Psalm 74, 12 is a key scripture because it refers to working salvation in the midst of all this world here. In, in the midst of the world and all the trouble, the Lord is going to work a plan of salvation, and then he's going to work a, a plan of salvation for you personally to draw you to the Son. And that child is coming after you in terms of a positive way, but in bow and other figures, it's related to coming after the bad guy. Jesus as the avenger and the vanquisher of evil deeds and harm to humans, animals, and nature, etc. Okay? 
which is very similar to the bullseye of Taurus. It's a power figure element of these 12 signs of the, their redeemer is strong. So Haggai 2, 6, and 7 refer to that coma star, which is the, the, the desire of the nations. And that, of course, is Zabi Java star also means beautiful glory. So we have beautiful and glory here in terms of glory is beautiful because it presents what? It presents peace and rest where there was no peace and rest, where Babylon was in charge, where suffering, deceit, lying, greed, and uh, just general evil and wickedness did reign and did rule and does rule as it does now. And so we're looking at things becoming beautiful and glorious. And I, I, I have a lesson available, and I don't know if it's up yet, but on beautiful, okay? And, and this is what we're talking about here. Beautiful and glory are used a lot together in your Bible. And I want to share that with you uh, real quick. Beauty, beauty and glory are essentially the same thing. In other words, you don't get beauty without glory. You need light, you need life, and you need joy. Otherwise, there is no beauty. There is no glory. Glory is the energy. That's what glory is. Glory is the energy of life. But it's only, it's only beautiful glory when it's done in righteousness and it, and it doesn't want to harm anyone. If you want to go do something and you're happy about it, God's not upset about that. But the problem with that energy that you have, are you going to use that energy and, and, and that laughter, like such, such as a clown or someone who wants to use your energy for harm or deceit or greed, see, or mammon? Then that glory is your shame, see? There's different kinds of glory. The stars differ in glory, the Bible says, in different colors, in different activities. So beauty comes from the idea that light and energy are being used to love and care and to support intelligence and introduce intelligence, okay? Then that becomes God's glory, and that becomes pure light, and that becomes acceptable to God, see? And it's beautiful. So the Bethlehem child comes to Jerusalem, which is the house of truth. Bethlehem is house of bread, but it's a house of living bread. If you read these scriptures, Jesus said, you will never die. If you share these scriptures, if you confess my name among men, I will confess your name amongst my father. You need to get out there and share with Mankind, that love is the way to go, and truth is the way to go, and caring is the way to go without any uh, uh, prerequisites. Now, there are times when you do need to hold back on your giving and charitability and so forth, and your time and energy, but the Holy Spirit will guide you so that you're not disobedient to Matthew chapter 7, the first couple of scriptures there. You don't cast your love before people who aren't paying attention. That's the point. Uh, don't go there, okay? But this is the house of living bread that brings peace by shaking everything up, cleansing every nation, and that's what we're talking about here. Working salvation. That's what's going to happen big time. And we're talking also about the tribulation period here, and we're talking about personal tribulation that comes to every Christian. You've been promised personal tribulation in the world you will have tribulation but don't get don't get fearful be faithful believe and be convinced that it's worth it that's what the word faith means you're believing that heaven is worth it that's what it means it doesn't mean believing for a hot dog or a brand new mercedes that's not what faith means it doesn't mean that some of that may be applicable but that is not the, the, the root meaning of, of, of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, which, which is being in the presence of the Lord, who's doing all this work. That's, that's what faith is. Faith is actually the blessed hope. It's believing in the confidence that's available for you to be with the Lord. 
Now let, let's go to Libra. Libra is the scales of justice. If this is the second constellation of 12, and there are scales where, where we measure things out. And we measure whether or not the individual has sinned. That's what it does. That's what it's for. It's the courthouse that keeps track of your personal behavior, whether you like it or not. One of the main things that humans like to do in Babylon and in the world is, is to try to ignore the fact that there's a judge downtown, that, that we live in anarchy, and they write books about it. They have three-syllable words, four-syllable words, uh, Voltaire or whoever, uh, uh, existentialism, uh, psychology, and so forth. They're trying to excuse behavior and take you away from the responsibility of your actions. And Libra is here to remind you that you will be held accountable for what you do especially the enjoyment of sin and hurting people and stealing from people and so forth. You're not going to have a defender in court who's going to uh, get you off. Forget it. Uh, there won't be a psychologist showing up. There will not be a, a philosopher from the, the university, local university here who's going to get you off from your sin and your error and your harm that you have performed uh, against people which is what all people do. 